second quarter from the big house. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Dave Ryan. Nothing, nothing, but Michigan has it on the 26th of Iowa. And Jared DeVries has returned, although he tried to return earlier. They wouldn't let him. Yeah, if I were Jared's coach, I'd be saying, don't limp. You don't want everybody in America to know you're hurt. Go out there and get ready to play, and Jared looks like he's ready. I was run only 10 plays all game. The 11th play of this drive is picked off. At the five yard line by Blaise Atkins. The 11th of his career. Six all time for the Hawkeyes in picks. Brings it back 14. And Brian Greasy, who had one interception all season coming into this one, has two in this first half. There is a marker down. And they're discussing the flag thrown at the 28 right at about the line of scrimmage. Steve Newman will tell us about it. Disregard the flag. The ineligible is not down here. Not what Lloyd Carr was hoping to hear. Yeah, the head coach in a situation like this, Brian Greasy has played so well and has received so much attention that the one thing that you do not expect is to have him throw into coverage. And this is simply a throw into coverage inviting the result that you see. So the Hawkeyes, like Michigan, have given it up twice today. Go outside Damon Gibson, the senior out of Houston, has the catch in front of the coverage by James Whitley. Dave, I think it's important to explain to the folks that exactly what I mean by throwing into coverage. That means there are too many people with white shirts in the area. If it's man coverage, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and you've got your receiver with a chance to beat the defender, then you throw it. But when there's more than one, and there were three in that case, you pull it down and run and do the best you can. Quick hitter with a fullback. Berger broke one tackle, but not the second one. He does have the Iowa first. At the 33, where Dehany Jones had him around the ankles and would let go. Not many opportunities for Michael Berger to carry it. Just the 14th time this year for the junior former tight end, as his number would suggest, out of Harlan, Iowa. I would suggest that he get the ball a lot today because the Michigan defense sideline to sideline is too fast and right at him is a good way to go. Short drop and juggle with two markers down Gibson at the 47 uh, yard line of Michigan and somebody will get flagged for a push off 18 yards on the completion. Tommy Hendricks and Whitley have the coverage, and it is defensive pass on the field. Damon Gibson is a receiver that Iowa had feared. He has tremendous speed, so as he makes his break in this direction, Whitley just gets a piece of his jersey and pushes him when the ball is in the air. The college rule is such that once that ball is thrown, you are not allowed to get that last push. So the 15 yards setting up Iowa at their 47. First time that Sherman has hooked up with a wideout today. The vast majority of his completions, unlike a lot of teams, unlike Michigan, going this year to his wide receivers. Rob Tyne in at fullback as Banks noted for his cutbacks had to cut back the instant he got that pitch and all he manages is the line of scrimmage where Josh Williams had it. Tavian Banks who shows very little emotion knows that on that play he was one inch from popping one of his patented long runs. His Hawkeye offense has averaged less than two minutes this year per scoring drive and look how many they popped at 58 or better banks in 82 banks 76 banks 71 63 and twice Gibson involved the 58 and a 65 yarder 39 big plays already for this Iowa attack leading his way all the way Tavian Banks gone touchdown Banks for Iowa 53 yards those are the lasers that we talked about in the open. Banks was upset with himself on the previous play because he did not break it. This time he finished the job with superb help by Mike Goff, his right guard, 
who's considered to be a big league prospect himself. This is 4.2340 speed. As fast as any back in America. So a stunned silence in Michigan Stadium as Iowa, as they have to everybody except Ohio State this year, gets the big play. Offense cranked up. The extra point by Zach Bromert. And Tavian Banks has struck for the Hawkeyes. 13 29 in the first half, 7 to nothing, Iowa. There's a conversation that hasn't taken place very much this year. The only other team to hit for a touchdown against the Michigan defense, Notre Dame, and uh, tracking Tavian Banks now 12 yards shy of 1,000. He's got seven carries to get there to uh, break the record by Texas Tech's Byron Hanspart from last year in terms of fewest carries to 1,000 yards. Clarence Williams breaking a pretty nice return. Let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike. Dave, back to Baton Rouge for Stuart Patridge and the Ole Miss Rebels are back on top. 53-yard big ball to Andre Roan. The senior will take it down to the one-yard line, set up a touchdown from there. LSU trailing by seven. Meantime, in Happy Valley, Penn State zero passing yards in the first quarter. Aaron Harris just left with a leg injury, and Minnesota leads by six. Yo, what does this do uh, mentally for the Michigan defense now? Now that the Iowa, as feared, has struck out across the 30 on the carry, Chris Howard. Yeah, we're through with our first play of this series, but if the Michigan de defense does not keep its aggressiveness, they'll be in serious trouble today. Sometimes a long run like that can, can literally paralyze a defense so that one becomes cautious. Players become cautious. They can't let that happen when they get back on the field. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, may be making that exact point. Well, Iowa already with more points than they average allowing all season. Russell Shaw on a perfectly timed route and pass, and he brought it in for the first down in 16 yards. And I might add, I could say the same thing for Brian Greasy, in that he could become cautious and not make these difficult throws. You see here, excellent move by Shaw, and that's a great throw. That's a very difficult throw. That has to go so that Shaw's the only one who has an opportunity to catch it. Russell Shaw has not gotten all that much business from Greasy this year. Just 12 catches in the first five games coming in. As the Wolverines have emphasized diversity on a lot of different targets. Howard continuing to pound the middle and reaches midfield. This Michigan defense, as we said, has not been in this position very often where somebody's struck for a big play. Only Notre Dame had uh, touchdowns at all against them this year. They were on 34, 26 yard passes, and that's it. That is the sum total of the touchdowns allowed by the Michigan D all season. Just eight plays of 20 or more yards. motion. Howard though was the target and he had at least 10 yards between himself and the nearest Hawkeye defender if it's not overthrown. One of the very important aspects of Michigan's game plan is to create mismatches and in this case they want to get this guy on this guy right here an inside linebacker. It's not an easy throw. It looks like an easy throw. All quarterbacks struggle with this flare pass as Greasy does here. They won't enjoy watching that one on the tape. A chance for a big play there. So that leads to a scramble on third and seven. Hemmed in. Greasy lets that one fly for the Iowa sideline. And they scream for, uh, for a flag. Hayden Fry says, how can you not throw a flag on that one? That is the best foot movement I've seen from Hayden Fry in 30 years. <laughs> he danced down that sideline. He looked like a ballet dancer. He wants that call. 
immediate pressure from John LaFleur, the big guy from South Dakota who's wearing his dad's number. Dad being a linebacker in the early 70s. Hayden is still running in place and still hasn't gotten the call. Yeah, he might have. Oh, there well, is. Maybe he did get the call. At, uh, at the last instant of the 11th hour, marker thrown. And they're going to move it back after all. On the offense. Loss of down. Fourth down. Well, that would explain the smile on his face. Yeah, and I think uh, probably his uh, athletic ability had a lot to do with him getting that call. That's one of the, the best athletes ever produced by West Texas. Low snap. Vincent all year has been terrific at handling those. This is the nation's leading punt returner, Tony Collins. His first return goes only nine on a 38-yard punt. Comes in averaging 24.3 per return. Seven to nothing, Hawkeye. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Discus Athletic, the brand that lets you compete on every field, and by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. So Iowa gets the big play touchdown, and then the defense quickly turns the ball right back over to Matt Sherman and the Hawkeye offense. And Sherman looked the deep ball wasn't there. It settled short. This is going to lose yardage on the, the burger catch. Clint Copenhaver had him tracked over there on the side. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Well, guys, for Tavian Banks, it was a decision between two sports in high school, soccer and football. In fact, he's such a good soccer player, if he had stuck with the sport, he could have played in college and maybe even at the Olympic level. Tavian says the dribbling in soccer going this way actually helps him because peripherally he could see all the defenders coming his way, and that helps him in football. But he says between soccer and football, if it's the NFL, he'll go pro in the NFL, guys. They pay just a little bit better. He said it's real easy when all you got to do is carry it. Movement before the snap. Uh, it appeared Chris Knipper, the tight end for Iowa, the guilty party this time. Well, now Jed Dull, number 82, made this mistake earlier. So now, if I'm right a coach, the coach, what do I do? I'll start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains. I put my down. veteran Knipper back in the game, and he makes the same cotton picking mistake. The tight ends will have some long practices. Mark Hendrickson, their coach, was one of our coaches at Georgia Tech through the early 80s, did a marvelous job, and is so happy to be back in his home state of Iowa, his lovely wife and family. But Mark won't be happy with that. Second Hawkeye penalty. White comes left, Gibson is right. And on second and 17, Gibson lost his footing and it almost turned into another Michigan interception. This time it bounced in and out of the hands of William Peterson, a true freshman from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Coach Carr was livid with the condition of the field last week. It was mostly Michigan slipping and falling. And in this case, it's the Iowa players. 16 yards to go. Hey, Gibson does a nice job there. He reaches in and knocks it away from Peterson. Well, when you're slipping and falling, you're just scrambling to get a hand on the ball. He became the defender. So third and 17. Incomplete as the blitz was descending on Sherman intended for Tony Collins. That's a play most commonly referred to as the jailbreak. I'm surprised that it wasn't directed at Tim Dwight. I'm surprised that it was Tony Collins that was to catch it. Dwight catches those and turns them into long runs more often than not. And Jim Herman says that's a little bit more like the unit I've seen this year. Jason Baker again set to kick to Woodson. As Michigan plays for the return. Wilson making the first man miss. Just across the corner. Another beauty by Baker. This one good for 50. 
and just a five yard return. 10.07 to go in the second quarter. Works into the Wolverines still looking for their first score. This series dominated by Michigan, as you might expect, 34, 8, and 4. They've won the last four over the Hawkeyes and 7, 1, and 1 over their last nine meetings. But Hayden Pride teams three times have knocked off a top 10 rated Michigan. They come in number five in the country this week. But down 7 to nothing. Batted away, but it goes to Streets, the intended target all along. He gets about eight yards out of it. Well, the first quarter marred by turnover after turnover, and this was the first to set off the whole pattern. Kerry Cook's picking off Greasy. Matt Sherman, though, would give it right back on the missed exchange. Sword on the recovery. Joe Slattery storming in untouched to block the punt. Sherman, though, intercepted. There's some closing speed on his play. Marcus Ray at his one-yard line. And in the second quarter, was Atkins stepping in front of Streets. That's the one that set up the 53-yard Tavian Banks touchdown. Here's Howard. And Chris Howard with some strong running in this first half. 13 yards ended by Jason House's tackle. Now this play was assured by an excellent block by Jeremy Tooman, number 80, the tight end, who really doesn't line up as a tight end on that particular formation. He came across in motion, turned on the outside man, and drove him six or eight yards onto his back. Chris Howard now 11 carries and already 69 yards. Try the hot hand again. This time, one maybe. Another Ohio State update from Mike Tirico. The update from the Big Ten. Ohio State starting to pull to a bit of bigger edge over Indiana on the deuce. Joe Germain now in. Ten-yard pass to the tight end, John Lumpkin. Buckeyes trying to bounce back from the loss to the Nittany Lions. Lead by 14. Bouncing back nicely. Iowa defense trying to keep Michigan on that side of the field, which they've done so far about as well as they would have hoped. And right as Michigan comes to the line, there are markers. This is going to be a formation error on Michigan. Inexcusable for veteran players. They practice this every single day. Coaches tear their hair out with this. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Tomorrow, NASCAR makes its first ever stop at the new track in Fontana, California. On ESPN, the Bush Grand National Series rolls on at the Kenwood 300 beginning at 4 Eastern. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series fans can turn to the deuce at the same hour for the No Fear Challenge, the newest race on the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Schedule. Demetrius Smith racing out of that huddle. They had one too many men that time. Fifth Michigan penalty, and they don't have it set yet. So Greasy has to burn the first time out with exactly eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Lloyd Carr will try to settle all the confusion on the Michigan sideline. Michigan looking at a second and 14. Today's discus athletic students of the game from Michigan. We go to quarterback Ryan Greasy with a 336 GPA in environmental policy. He's finishing up his degree this semester. And from Iowa Senior Center, Derek Rose, an economics major with a 387 GPA. This is Tuman on the completion and right at the marker for the first down. We'll see where they give him the progress. But he's going to be close. 13 yards at Gibson Bay Jack. Jeremy Tuman is a great big target that can move, sending him across the field, creating either a mismatch with a linebacker that's supposed to run with him or having him run through zones where he's difficult to locate. That's what the Michigan offense is after. Jeremy disappointed that he couldn't break that knockdown tackle there by Ed Gibson. Second catch today, the makings of another big day for the junior from Liberal, Kansas. Reese with a backwards pass, and Anthony Thomas looking long for Shaw. But harmlessly, this one flutters out of bounds. 
looked good, I'm sure, when they were drawing it up. When secondary coaches coach against that kind of play, they teach their safeties deep responsibility. In that case, Claes Atkins, the corner to the boundary, had responsibility for the deep third. He played his position extremely well, and that's the reason that the throw wasn't there. When he gets careless and thinks he's going to come up and tackle the screen, that's when you see those long touchdown passes by tailbacks like Anthony Thomas. Well, Penn State trailing Minnesota early. Number five, Michigan down midway in the second. On second and ten, plenty of protection, and Tillman out there roaming free again inside the Hawkeye 30, where Gibson undercuts him 18 yards on his third catch of the first half. And I can tell you right now that Iowa is going to continue to see number 80, Jeremy Tillman, coming across the field. He'll come into your picture from the bottom with a linebacker chasing him. That's Matt Hughes, who's an excellent player, but he doesn't run quite as fast as number 80. Well, at this Jeremy point, Tuman. at this point, Tuman has burned now three teams. The wide receivers have not had nearly as much impact on the offense. Surprising to you that Tuman gets as little attention as he does. Here's Thomas spins inside the 25. I mean, that, that continues to be something that we can exploit. The first replay we saw in this game of Jeremy Tuman, what was happening? He was being mugged as he tried to get off the line of scrimmage. He had three people that were beating up on him. They will have, I will have to go back to that and keep him from getting a clean release. If they can knock him off even momentarily, then those linebackers and safeties will be able to stick with him. But they'll have to do that or he's gonna eat them up all day. Did it to Colorado, did it to Northwestern last week. He's doing it again. Second and seven, and here's Thomas. A lot of power to go with his straight on speed. We asked Lloyd Carr in our meeting with him yesterday, can we expect to see number 32 Thomas Moore? The answer was a very, it was a sort of a wry smile. You see this young freshman here who has more running ability than any of the other backs on the team. It is believed by the coaches. A big, powerful man who's beginning to get a feel for the offense. This is that unbalanced formation that they had shown earlier. Once again, whistles, flags before the ball is snapped. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That is six penalties, mostly of this variety against Michigan. What we see here, now this is both offensive tackles to one side. Very unusual. Jeff Backus moves over from the left side and lines up next to John Jansen. So you've got an unbalanced formation with about 600 pounds of beef lined up together. So here it is again. But they keep backing themselves up. So first and 15 for Anthony Thomas. Near the 15. What's happening now with Indiana, Ohio State, Mike Tirico? Well, Ohio State keeps pulling away and pulling away. Jay Rogers back to pass for Indiana. Off the deflection, great athletic ability by Clinton Wayne. 6'3", 270, the freshman defensive end. The INT and the TD. So that one pretty much as expected. Not so here, not in Ann Arbor where it's Iowa 7 to nothing, but Michigan driving for the possible tying score. They've reached the Hawkeye 15. Reese's pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Jared DeVries. 6'4", 265 pounds up. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, he just, DeVries just deprived uh, Kerry Cooks of the next interception of the game. Number 15, Cooks, the strong safety, had drawn a beat on this play. He would have plucked this thing and gone the distance. You can't see him from our angle, but it was very evident from uh, the, the actual play. So third and 11. As big a play as the Iowa defense has yet faced. Greasy, not pressured for the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. 
Marcus Ty Streets with the catch from Brian Greasy. This ball is thrown into a very small window. As you see, number 86 Streets work his way on the curl. That looks like a lot of space, but that's a difficult throw. Execution is what causes touchdowns. For Streets, his third touchdown of the year. And for Craig Baker, the tying of PAT. So we're 7-7. Seven, seven. 4.53 to go in the first half from the big house. Greasy to tie Streets to tie it up. Notre Dame had Michigan by touchdown at the half. They stormed back in that one. They have come back to tie this one. At 7-7, seven seven, just under five minutes to go in the half. Big Peters kick is returned by Richard Carter. Out to the 28-yard line. ESPN 2 continues its college football coverage tonight at 6. The number four Tar Heels battling the Wolfpack in an in-state showdown in Raleigh. And we follow that one up at 9 with the number 21 Bulldogs against the Commodores in an SEC East matchup. All the action on ESPN 2, your home for college football tonight. Couple of emotional swings, momentum swings in this first half. Good. Very important for Iowa to get a big play early, and they did. Very important for Michigan to answer, and they did. Now Sherman being chased by Jones. And Dehany Jones can run a little bit. I was just about to say that Sherman had surprised me with his speed until I saw him try to outrun Dehany Jones. But Jones looks to me to be a 4-5 type guy. He's an outstanding student. And it's nice when you're bright and you can fly. He replaces the injured Eric Mays, the former walk-on who had been elected captain, out for the year. After knee surgery, Jones, though, stepping right in, has led Michigan and tackles each of the last two weeks in the absence of Mays. to Banks out of one tackle and the 33. Sam Sword finally there to grab Tavian Banks. So we see the offensive thinking of Iowa progressing here. It's very clear that they agree that the right way to attack Michigan is straight up. Get after them because when you try to go side to side, they track you down like heat-seeking missiles. Fabian Banks, by the way, 76 yards. He came in needing 81 to go to 1,000. His 53-yarder for the only Iowa score so far. Michigan a little bit too anxious this time on the blitz with Sword and Jones ready to storm the gates before the snap. Sam Sword felt like he had the snap count calculated. We'll see if he was correct. Well, he's applauding, and I was moving back. He was correct. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. It is so important as a poised offensive lineman. Look right in this region. You'll see people, Mike Goff moving early. When Mike moves, then his right tackle, McKinney moves. You must sit in there. That's the discipline of the O-lineman. That's football. Doesn't matter who's running at you. Sherman now having to bark it out over the crowd on third and 11. Off the play fake. Intercepted at the 45, the second in this first half for Marcus Ray. Marcus Ray showed his experience. He baited Sherman into this throw. He hung and hung. He didn't let Sherman see that he had good coverage. He sat in the middle. He's right over here, just out of the picture until the ball is thrown and then he makes this break. That's his second interception of the day. And he is demonstrating senior leadership for this great defense. 
Sherman as you said not aware of where Ray was until unfortunately for him it was too late. Knipper had a step on sword didn't see Marcus. So Michigan now thinking about a halftime lead forget it interception Ed Gibson with a big return inside the five stretches toward the goal line and almost made it at the one Iowa after a 63 yard return by Ed Gibson will have it first and goal two consecutive ill advised throws by two veteran quarterbacks who should know better what's happened is these two quarterbacks have obviously made a decision that they're going to have to force things and make big plays today and they have both cost their teams. This is what you call good field position. Well, a couple of teams that have not been plagued by turnovers, certainly to this degree, and that is the story, beginning and ending of the story for this first half. Ed Gibson with his first pick of the year to set up the Iowa touchdown. As the fullback Berger just plowed over left tackle to give the Hawkeyes the lead back. That was an old fashioned power eye with those linemen down in four point stances, their elbows bent, their knees bent, nose to the ground, and root hogging off the football to move the line of scrimmage backwards. You'll see the, the line of scrimmage actually move into the end zone, which allows the fullback Berger, number 85, to knock it in for the touchdown. Which he enjoyed. Banks gets most of the scoring opportunities. And that's the first this year for Berger. The extra point is blocked. So keep it at 13-7 Iowa. Careless protection up front causes those kinds of blocks. A 63-yard return by Gibson, though, made the Berger touchdown possible, and it's 13-7. is going to kick it off for Iowa after Zach Bromert, who was uh, 30 of 31 for the year, had the extra point blocked by James Hall of Michigan. 13-7, 2.27 to go first half. McLaughlin with a loop. On the 23, Tate Shansky on the return. Let's check in with Mike Tarico. Dave, we're coming up to the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Stories we will cover. Penn State in trouble. Trailing Minnesota at halftime. The Buckeyes in their game against Indiana. And we'll check out what's going on in the Big East. It includes Syracuse having no problem with Temple. That plus Chris Lee and Kirk coming up at halftime. Penn State fans so happy at Florida's loss last week. They rioted outside the Beaver Stadium. Perhaps a bit too premature a celebration as they struggle with the Gophers today. That premature rioting will get you every time. Is there ever a good time for rioting is really the question. Charles Woodson is in the game with the inside receiver on the right side. What they go. Draw play for Howard and it's not loose. It looked after the tackle. But the ball recovered at the 41 by Iowa. That's 94 Jared DeVries who fought through the knee injury to get back on the field, who knocked that ball loose. Football is a game of ball security, field position, blocking and tackling. 
Jared DeFries got a nice play going here, does Howard. DeFries tackles the ball, knocks it out. Nice play by the big man. Unusual, a big man who's made a lot of All-American teams is referred to as a finesse player by his coaches. That was not finesse. Matt Hughes, the man that recovered it for the Hawkeyes. Howard, though, may have an argument because if his knee wasn't already down, it was pretty close. Well, those arguments aren't worth much in this league at this point. Michigan's defense so strong all year. These quick change opportunities. This one is overthrown at the goal line intended for Gibson. And the coverage from the freshman Peterson. More Big Ten football today on ABC as part of regional coverage. We're going to get 3.30 Eastern, number 11, Michigan State traveling to Northwestern. They need a win to set up the showdown with Michigan next week. Other games, Georgia Tech tackling third-ranked Florida State, Washington, Arizona. And in the Big 12, Texas A&M visiting Kansas State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Sherman up six and in great shape to add to that before the half. Banks again tried to cut back as soon as he got the ball and the footing wasn't there for him. That's the first time in either of the last two games we've seen here in the big house where the poor footing actually helped Michigan. In the past, it's always been the Michigan players that seem to struggle with the turf. But a great athlete like Banks must be able to get good purchase, good footing, in order to make the severe cuts that he makes. And in that case, it just wasn't there. It ripped up. So third and 15. Michigan offense has given it up four times on giveaways. The defense, though, trying to get it back for him once more. And this one is batted around, and with, with three blue jerseys converging on it, none of them can come up with it. And Clint Copenhaver can't believe that result. Well, Michigan has come back with Jim Herman's favorite kind of defense, which is to get after him with the blitz. So you've got man coverage here. And a break on the ball by the rookie Peterson is all it takes to break up the play. Copenhaver would have had it, and so would Sword, but they outfought each other for it. Six true freshmen have played for the Wolverines, and Peterson's been one of the real pleasant surprises. Baker's had a big first half. And is this one away from Woodson? It gets the roll. Jason Baker is one of the most impressive true freshmen I've seen in a long, long time. I liked his leg action, even though his results weren't great two weeks ago. His results today have been superb. Down to Dave Ryan. Well, guys, Michigan offensive coordinator Mike DeBoer says he gave his team two quizzes during the week during contact drills. He wanted to make sure they got through every single exercise, every drill, without a fumble. They did that. And he was pleased they passed the two quizzes. Now he wanted to make sure they passed the test in this game. That was not fumbling against the Hawkeyes, but it's happened today in addition to live interceptions. Yeah, the worst uh, fears playing out. But I tell you what, uh, with four giveaways to the Iowa offense, as high-powered as they are, to only have surrendered 13 points, not many, if any, other defenses. Could, uh, could have uh, salvaged as close a first half as they have. Williams to the nine, under a minute. But there's a reason that they're the number one ranked defense in America. They've already given up almost three times more than their average per game, and we haven't gotten to the half. I think you're right, Dave, but I think they've got their hands full today with the Hawkeyes. Well, they knew that coming in. They knew they couldn't afford this many giveaways. Characteristic, especially by Greasy. Pulled down from behind by DeVries. They said yesterday when they run away from him, he's such a great finesse player. That's where he shows his true ability when they run right at him and attack him head on. He struggles. Well, it reminds one of playing against the old 
Deacon Jones type player who was just awesome coming from the backside. Jared DeVries is similar in that he takes severe slants and moves so quickly and so well for a big guy that he gets in your backfield. He is still limping. Well, Jared and I will have to have a meeting at the half. You can't let people know that you hurt. They'll figure out which leg it is for the second half. They hadn't blocked him yet, though, so uh, maybe he ought to hurt the other leg. Coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report. So far, unofficially, he's caused a fumble, knocked a pass down, a tackle for a loss, and got five tackles total. Mike Tarico in the studio. We'll hear again from Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herb Street, all down in Auburn. Where they're preparing, along with uh, several thousand fans, ringing their outdoor studio for Auburn, Florida later. 23 seconds to go in this first half. I promise you it's more than several thousand. Well, that's just outside the state. In a First time out just called by Iowa. They each have two. Williams. Nothing. No gain. And another quick Hawkeye turnover. Or, or timeout call with uh, just five seconds elapsed and 18 seconds. That's good football. Taking those two timeouts forces the Wolverines to punt the ball here. And that has become a little more of an adventure than Lloyd Carr would like. They've had problems with the long snap. Now they've had problems with protection in this game. And, and more pointedly, they've had problems getting the ball off quickly by their opponents. What Carr's got to worry about is both White and Collins are back. First time they punted it, they dropped White back at single safety. And uh, he seemed to lose it in the sun and let it uh, bounce. He did. He lost it in the sun. So at this point, they've dropped them both back as Jason Vinson is eight yards deep in his end zone. one another and hope that, uh, that Dwight is able to guess right and in this case he is driven back inside his 40 on a big punt by Vincent reverses field gets a block and weaves the other way and he's gonna go Tim Dwight brings this one back as time elapses in the first half mercy 61 yard return by Dwight <laughs> team is electrified by their most electrifying player. Tim Dwight has turned over the Heisman run to Tavian Banks, but he might have just vaulted right back into the picture and a great open field block by Rob Tyne, number 31. Only the sixth time this year a team has allowed Tim Dwight to make a return. And David, there is no time on the clock. He got to about midfield and you started to think, well, should he just go down and give that offense one more shot? Never entered his mind, quite yeah, obviously. Jim doesn't think quite that way. Going for two. This uh, made necessary by the block extra point on the roll. Wide open is Knipper. And so the first half expires with a 61-yard punt return by Tim Dwight. A fired up Hayden Fry. And over 100,000 very unhappy Wolverine fans in the big house. This goes straight on to the Tim Dwight highlight reel. One of his best. And it makes for a 21-7 Iowa halftime lead. 